Good afternoon. On behalf of the libraries and archives Wikidata team, I would like to thank you for this opportunity sharing with you one of our link open data efforts. Connecting users to our collections, utilizing a semantic Wikipedia knowledge base known as Wikidata. Our project began with the following assumptions. Will the transition to data-centric description optimize user experience? Will there be a data agnostic system that meets our expectations? Will the workflow devised from the experiment be replicable and adaptable beyond the professionally trained experience cataloging and metadata staff so that the project participation will no longer be limited to a small group of staff? Will the description for names successfully expose connections between names and the collections? An open system such as Wikidata has made sharing of structured data very promising. For the data preparation, data loads and analyses, all its processes concerning data appear to be relatively straightforward and easy. Therefore, is it then potentially a viable option for our link open data experiment for names and collections. On with these questions, our link open data journey began with a Wikidata data modeling workshop in November 2019, conducted by Andrew Lee, the Wikimedian at large at the Smithsonian. Since its launch in 2012, Wikidata has proven to be an extremely attractive data store for a link open data platform. Its community of volunteers, data editors, and software developers have shown us the joy of witnessing link open data at play. Wikidata deploys an internationally accepted descriptive standard for data model and query. A growing number of APIs and web services taking advantage of this tremendous knowledge base deliver contents to web-based products. Contents can be delivered in tables, charts, and graphs. Timelines and maps can be easily generated and incorporated in any web-based services, including AI tools like AP Apple's series and Amazon's Alexa. Wikidata activities are automatically logged, providing user useful, info, uh, use, useful metrics for data review and collection analysis for better data quality and accuracy. In turn, help us to improve collections and services. Structured data benefits users of the system greatly. Currently, Smithsonian has no central hosting system for agent names, so to connect names with collection across units. Names describing persons, people groups, artifacts, specimens, buildings, and many more, collected over time and stored in disparate databases. For our experiment during the pandemic, Libraries Wikidata team identify five pilot projects to test the assumptions. 250 African ethnic groups from the African Art Museum, close to 4,000 artist names, representing a small subset from the library and the American Art Museum artist file databases. There are 90 portraits from the Museum of Asian Art Collection forming part of the Chinese Ancestor Portraits Collection. Most of the sitters from the portrait collections are from the Royal House of Aixin Jero of Qin Empire. The Chinese Ancestor Portrait Project added a unique angle for us to test the multilingual and non-Latin scripts aspect. The Dinwen Libraries of the History and Science Technology Collection offer over 1,000 scientists and artists. Most of their publications are also found in a digitized text repository known as Wikisource, a free online library. Bringing up the rear to the project is 
the Smithsonian Research Online, highlighting the research output of the current and past Smithsonian staff. Throughout the experimentation, we face many concerns and issues relating the descriptive standards and the best practices surrounding concepts, topics, language, and scripts. Ethical issues on the PII aspect of names generated many discussions. Potential inferences from data will impact units beyond the libraries and archives. Wikidata is an entity relationship data structure. Operations designed to be simple and general. The repository has now become a clearinghouse for identifiers, especially for the Glen community resources. A Wikidata item relays a thing, a concept, an entity. In other words, whatever you wanted to describe. The most important part in Wikidata terms are the label and the description. Alternative names are provided as aliases. Each item has unique identifier in the form of a Q, letter Q followed by a number. Each property also has identifier starting with the letter P with a number. A statement is in triple form, consisted of an item ID, a property ID, and a value. And the value can also be another item. This can be described with qualifiers. Here you see a query that gives us a taste of our labor. I think Gerald Hongli, crowned as Qianlong Emperor in 1735, was one of the most illustrious monarchs of the Imperial China, very much a Renaissance man. By way of structural data, descriptions about Qianlong, the person, families, his works, his contribution to the humanity, in government affairs, scholarship, poetry, even in popular culture are at user's fingertips. Being a superb military tactician, Qin Emperor greatly expanded and strengthened the Qing Empire's borders to the west, north, and south. His court, politically and military maneuvers are very much a the center of many TV dramas. He was also known to be a prolific poet, composed over 40,000 poems throughout his lifetime, demonstrating his appreciation for the art and pride of his military might. He saw himself as a preserver and restorer of both Manchu and Han culture. He decreed a major compilation known as Siku Quanshu the imperial collections, the emperor of four treasures on literature, philosophy, science, and law. If you have a mobile device with you, point the camera to the QR code or copy and paste the shooting URL on a web browser to experience firsthand the wiki data resources that celebrate Qianlong Emperor's life and accomplishments. Libraries in open data experiment, for the most part, has focused on Wikidata contents, which in terms help populate Wikipedia info box and lends metadata supports to Wikimedia Commons and Wikisource. A localized Wikidata known as Wikibase has been in the work. We expect to have a fully functional installation to accommodate names for agents and concepts in compliance with the Smithsonian's policies and best practices serving collections across Smithsonian units. Secretary Joseph Henry's statement resonates with libraries link open data projects. The Wikidata platform has brought many opportunities for data creators, consumers, and the institution's collections. As a member of the library's archives Wikidata team, I would like to extend an invitation to join our conspiracy to make progress commitment to continuously reassess our professional talents and contributions in an effort to increase human knowledge, reimagine our role and impact of our knowledge in service to researchers and general public. Our team will contribute articles describing respective projects in the coming months. 
please be sure to tune in Libraries Archives blog Unbound. Thank you. See, so um, the first question that we receive is, what does Wikidata do for me personally and my collection professionally? So you're thinking about if you have special interests, uh, things that you wanted to find, you wanted to be able to make connections from one type of materials to another type. Wikidata as an open source has a lot of materials that you will be able to, to connect from one to the other. And in my environment, I love to know where I would be able to find more information for a characters that I had just read about in a book. And that book has been transformed into a, a movie or a film. And then so, you know, the film that has this, this dress being designed by this, uh, worn by this actress, so happened also designed in, by no um, famous designer. At the same time, we so happened the museum has a physical item for this dress, for example. And in the case of what we just seen, in the experiment for the Chinese ancestor portraits project, we are able to make connection between the object, the sitter, Chen Long Emperor, and all the works that he's uh, providing. Um, he's written his contributions and really helping us to make connection between what we have to offer within the Smithsonian and the cultural heritage institutions around the world that share the same, uh, same type of goals. Let's see. Um, Richard and Catherine, do you have additional insight from your experiment? Sorry, I'm having a little unmute problem. I'd be happy to jump in. I do. Huh. Hmm. Am I still muted? Okay. We can hear you now. Yeah, my computer can apparently. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I have worked here for many years as a reference librarian, and one of my major frustrations has been a lack of um, consistency of the way we've uh, different. Uh, units in the Smithsonian do their metadata descriptions and their conventions because I often I know things are out there but I can't find them. I know that there's more Whistler materials sprinkled across the institution. I know that there are different parts of Smithsonian that have papyri manuscripts. And a lot of those problems come down to we have these siloed collections and they're siloed in part because we don't share Underlying, underlying naming authorities. And Wikidata is one of the th uh, ways that we could provide this sort of substructure of calling related things across the institution with the same name, actually number in, the, in this real case of Wikidata, so that I can find things, not because I know a guy over at Natural History who tells me about the papyri manuscript, but because we have a better way of searching across platforms. So a little bit in answer to the first question posed to Jackie is, I think that's how that could be useful to different units around the Smithsonian. We can't see each other's stuff very well right now. And I will just jump in as um, part of the group that works on tracking all the research output of the Smithsonian and helping to uh, talk about the research of the Smithsonian. Um, there are many initiatives that are using Wikidata, such as the, um, the um, initiative for open citations to make the metadata about research much more open. And Wikidata has been a great home for holding that data, for letting us um, really connect that to other parts of the Smithsonian, such as perhaps the collections that were used in the publication or you know, um, the affiliations of the researchers and connecting them to their Wikipedia, Wikipedia, 
Wikipedia pages themselves. So um, I, I see it as a great opportunity to make sure that the data that we have siloed here at the Smithsonian is put, pushed forth to the world and able to connect with a lot of different other data sources. And I feel like that's a benefit for most glam institutions these days to get the data out there to connect it to other sources. And from the multilingual side, um, especially for our collection, one the one reason we showcase uh, Channel Emperor is that if you were to wanted to see the data quickly in the language of your choice, uh, you would be able to follow the trail and make the selection very quickly. The reason for that is that there's scores of developers volunteer their time making APIs, connecting to the browser, allowing users to really quickly make the choice of the language of the script that they would like to see. And we uh, will paste the link in the chat for you to experience the same query that we have shown you in our presentation. And you could see the information in the Chinese script, for example. If I could pick up for a second on Jackie's discussion of languages, this morning I had an email from a gentleman who's a PhD student in Cappadocia, Turkey. He's looking for a manuscript that's in the Freer collection, and the name of the manuscript that he has um, is in Arabic, and the name of the um, manuscript in the TMS system is in English. I mean, Wikidata is language agnostic. That would definitely help us open out our resources with some greater efficiency to the rest of the planet if uh, we had a language agnostic system so that we don't have to spend a lot of time sort of stumbling around trying to figure out which manuscript they are referring to. And for the emerging, um, so take for example, the, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, when they struck, a lot of people wanted to find information about it. Uh, and there are so many places for them to look. And a scores of um, students coming from Indonesian and university down in Indonesia quickly put together under the, the guidance of his professor, quickly put together a, um, a dashboard like to be able to connect a, an interested person who wanted to know a little bit about the disease, what happened to the infections, and what happened to a particular country uh, with the impact of this. Um, and I will paste the link for the COVID-19 dashboard in the chat for you to experience how quickly that if you were a curator for a, a museum or a, a particular subject, you want to be able to make use of freely available resources that are currently being described, and you will be able to make that quick connection and embed the information onto your web page in a very short period of time. This is a very exciting um, way to connect the names that describe the object and then the user who are interested in, ma in making the connection. Actually, I thought of another way that I, I think in terms of um, Smithsonian collections, you could care about uh, Wikidata. Um, uh, one thing that we noticed when we were looking at the Chen Nung Emperor the, is that when you put together a Sparkle query like, the, like the, what Jackie has shown you, you also see what you don't have. So if you, were to, if you wanted to look at your own collection to perhaps identify gaps in it, um, of things you might want to acquire, or anyway, to, to know the scope of your collection in some more granular way, Wikidata is an enormously effective tool for that if you have subscribed your data 
um, using this kind of uh, structured system. So here, here's another question. Does the Smithsonian have any issues with Wikidata's requirements for published citation in order to show data is authoritative? Richard, you wanted to try to answer this question? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I would love to. Um, so I think that the Smithsonian prides itself on uh, the authority of the, the information that we have and that we have done a lot of um, background research on our collections and other data sources that we have. Um, so uh, providing a, um, a reference for a lot of what we do, especially in the Smithsonian Libraries and Archives, um, we are more than happy to do that. And, and that is something that we've tried to um, integrate into the workflows that we have. Um, however, we've discussed areas where we don't always have um, appropriate uh, references. And I think maybe Catherine could talk a little bit more about this, especially in terms of like provenance that may be behind a firewall and a data you know, system that does not have a, a published uh, reference that you can, a publicly available reference for inclusion into Wikidata. Is that accurate Catherine do you do you want to talk yeah, a little well, bit about that that's right we've been struggling with that a little bit I mean what we've come to realize uh, somewhat unmodestly perhaps is that in some cases we are the experts we we are not pu published data per se but we have done the research on some of in this case we were looking at donors things like birth dates and death dates etc um, and we're the source of information um, the curatorial staff chose not to include it in a catalog. For example, we published a catalog on these ancestor portraits. Uh, Jan Stewart was one of the principal authors. Um, she did include some things in TMS about the, uh, Fritzloff was the donor of this collection of most of these objects. She included some information in our, um, our TMS about it, but it's not in her catalog. She chose it wasn't germane perhaps to whatever she was describing. But yet we have that information sometimes it's lacking in all their cases, birth dates, death dates, next door neighbor who happened to be Georgia O'Keeffe, things like that, that we could put out there. Um, but we of course can't link, um, the TMS is behind the firewall, so we can't link to it as a reference. So that has been a problem. We, we mm -hmm. are discussing how to get around that. And I, I think one area that is promising is the uh, interplay between Wikibase as something that you can install locally and uh, publicize your data with or make your data public. And then Wikidata, which is the joint project that anyone can edit and contains uh, a whole lot of information about a lot of subjects and a lot of topics. Um, I would think that by you know, making your data available and all the information that you have from expert knowledge in a Wikibase would then make it authoritative enough to reference in Wikidata. I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work, but it is one area we're kind of, you know, investigating. Like, would that be a way to allow us to selectively um, uh, publish, selectively make public data about some of, this, some of these things that Catherine was talking about? And then that would allow us to then have authoritative data enough to, you know, meet Wikidata's rules. Uh, but it's still very, you know, experimental at this point. And, you know, not only Wikidata's rules, I guess, we, we would like to meet the expectations of the people who use Wikidata and Wikipedia. We want to be a reliable source of information. And sometimes those people, if there are any good scholars, <laughs> want to see the source. They, they, you know, if you cite a, a link to a book, they want to look at the book. In this case, they, if they can't get to our TMS data, um, the question is how much does that compromise the credibility of our information? So the question concerning why it matters. Well, we we consider ourselves an uh, information um, so, uh, professionals. So we deal with structural data. We would like to be able to connect our users who is who is coming from using different types of devices to be able to get to where they needed to go. Smithsonian has so much to offer. 
And a lot of the information are not easily accessible. And having an entry coming in through names connected with works, then expanding onto the greater horizon of collections, in regard, you know, in regard of the type of format, um, so long as the names gets connected, it will provide another layer of essentially data reuse and stimulate research interest. And, and so the question is why would it matter? Because it is in a way that we are the Smithsonian that is providing and a, and a, a platform you know, for our either researchers or general public to be able to be excited about why is it important to be a human? And, and again, this is not just our data as the Smithsonian, this is the nation's data. These are the national collections. They belong to the American people and to the world. And it's our duty to make sure that those are accessible to people mm -hmm. and that they are distributed as widely as possible to make sure that the work that goes into sustaining the Smithsonian isn't just for the lucky few who get to come to Washington, but it's for everyone who can access it um, in various methods, as long as they have a computer, but... Um, yeah. And, uh, and one of our goal is that we, we must avail all the resources that the talents that we have by means possible to, to those who wish to get to. And so one of the ways that for us, link data is one format for us to experiment and Wikidata is not the only link open data platform available. It just so happened during this pandemic period we were, we were in the environment where Wikidata is, was the really viable platform for us to experiment. And, you know, we're not the only ones experimenting with it. I mean, there's a large consortium of libraries and cultural institutions um, that are looking at Wikidata as a possible platform for their linked open data. Um, I would, I'd say in a PCC project that we were part of, which, there were at least 70 major research institutions, uh, including things like Harvard and Stanford and I, other major institutions who are looking at getting their data out to the larger world as well. So this is, this is a broader push than just the Smithsonian libraries and archives that we are part of. And I think we are about to come to an end for our session. We uh, finally share a link to our PCC uh, dashboard, the project that highlighting all our activities for the five projects. And I hope when you get a moment, you will be able to visit the, the dashboard that we have generated to in a way give you a sense of how exciting it is for us to be able to see all these things get connected. And I thank you very much for joining us today and um, have a good conference, the rest of the conference. Thank you.